Hey everybody, it's Jodie here from Decorous Vintage Designs. Today I am going to be showing you how to get this very pretty look. It is a textured look, however I will be using Dixie Belle Silk Paint, which is a new range from them. And while it gives a textured look, it actually dries very silky smooth. It's a great look that I can't wait to show you guys. To start with, I have the uh, Hampton Olive, which is probably the earthiest colour out of the whole range. It doesn't matter what brush you use, as long as you use one with a round edge if you want to get a similar look to me. And I am just stippling this on and the plan is to have different gradients of this colour. You don't need to put on a lot of pressure for this part, you just need to gently start tapping. This is what is going to create the textured look and it's what's going to create this sort of stone-like rustic effect. I did film this video live, so all of these videos will, were filmed live, but I thought that um, it's a lot easier sometimes, isn't it, to watch everything um, edited. So I decided to edit these videos so that you guys could kind of get the information a little bit quicker and you don't have to sit there for a couple of hours. But yeah, that's why you might see me tapping my phone every now and then and it might look like I'm talking because I am talking um, and it, it was just because I was talking to people who were watching it live. Don't worry if the wood pokes through a little bit. Um, it is, as I say, going to be a bit of a rustic look. So don't worry if you have some of the wood shining through. Next up is Sandcastle, which is probably the beigeiest colour out of um, all of them in this range. It's looking a little bit whiter here than what it actually is, but I promise you it's a very warm beige colour and I have a separate brush for it and I am just kind of tapping this into the Hampton Olive. And again, um, I'm just kind of creating this ombre, this very kind of rustic rough ombre, the blending won't be perfect. And I am just blending that into the Hampton Olive by stippling and then also getting my Hampton Olive and blending that into the uh, that colour as well. So it is just kind of going to be a very rustic look, this one. I haven't done the doors live. While I was painting this live, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the drawers. So um, just to let you know, all the colours that I am using today, I did use on the drawers at the end. Um, however, I didn't film myself doing that. You can see here now that the texture is really starting to build on this piece. The bell brush is a natural bristled brush and it does create a lot of texture. So just to let you guys know that the silk range is currently available in UK, Europe, Australia and New Zealand and it's going to be released early 2021 in the US. I think Dixie Bell just wanted to make sure that they had plenty of stock in before they released to the US and that's why there's been a kind of delay in releasing there. What I'm doing here is doing a 50-50 mixture of my Hampton Olive and my Sandcastle. I want the gradient to also be on, um, so as well as the gradient being bottom to top, I also want it left to right. So we're going to have gradients all the way through this piece. So I am blending this and I am going to start stippling this at the bottom of the middle drawer, as you can see here, and I will be blending it also into the Hampton Olive um, by stippling. When you stipple, make sure that you use an old brush or a brush that you're not too bothered about because it can damage the brush, sorry, the brush bristles. I can never say that very well. I find the bell brush is a very good brush for it because the natural bristles are very good quality and they do bounce back very easily as well as creating the texture. So, um, so I'm kind of happy that I know this brush will bounce back, but if I wasn't, then I would probably just use a very cheap chip brush, which I do often anyway. So I'm creating a diagonal again and I'm just playing here, I'm just kind of seeing what happens and I'm blending it into the two colours that are from my first door 
and just like I did before I'm using I'm, I'm creating a diagonal with this color and I'm going to come in in a moment with a lighter color on top and here I am grabbing Sunkissed and this is a lighter version of the Sandcastle. It's kind of a cream colour but it's still got a lot of yellow, like yellow beige to it so it's not quite as warm as the Sandcastle but Sunkissed is still a very warm sort of beigey white colour. And again just stippling, um, I've got another brush for this, it's not my bell brush unfortunately, I only have a couple and I wanted to use a fresh brush. I often tell people not to worry too much, like just don't get overwhelmed by this stuff, don't get overwhelmed by the products, just use what you've got and improvise and that's exactly what I'm having to do here. So I think this might be the small oval brush that I've got by Dixie Bell that I am using here. And the reason why I am using round, rounded tips is because it creates this kind of rounded edge then with the paint. So if you can see where I'm stippling, you can see that the brush strokes are leaving like circular dots and I really want that texture today. So if you remember earlier, we mixed our Hampton Olive and our um, Sandcastle, and now I'm actually just adding a little bit of Sunkiss to this mix because I want that gradient again going from right to left. Um, and yeah, so it's just gonna create that ombre sideways, horizontally, as well as vertically. Last up for the base colour on this piece is Endless Shaw. Endless Shaw is like a off-white colour by Dixie Bell in the new Silk range. Um, yeah, I'd probably say Endless Shaw is the warmest colour out of the whites. Um, and it's probably my favourite. I feel like everybody has a white that they love. Some people like really cool, crisp, fresh whites. And some people like the off-whites. And I personally prefer those. Especially with this colour. Uh, sorry, with this piece. Because there's already a lot of beige and brown and olive in it. So it would just work much better with this piece than a cooler white would. So I put a redesign with Prima Transfer on this piece uh, called Delicate Fleur. There are plenty of videos out there um, if you want to learn how to apply a transfer. Just let me know if you need one. I can always comment you on if that would be helpful. I have mixed a 50-50 solution of Harbour, which is like a turquoise colour with Cape Current, which is a nice deep blue and also diluted it. Again, 50-50 with water. Um, and here I have Nautical mixed with, I'm trying to think, it's lost me. Okay, Nautical and Deep Sea, and that's 50-50 solution again, and I've mixed it again 50-50 with water. I am kind of applying all over the top of this piece, and then I'm grabbing my rag and then just dabbing. At the moment, the rag is dry. But if you feel like you've put too much paint on, then by all means, you can just wet your rag a little bit, and it will take more of the paint off. I'm building up the colours gradually as well. I am not being super quick about building up these colours because I, I, you know, I don't just want a lot of colour on there that I'm then going to find difficult to get out. Also, every time you use a colour, make sure that you give it a good stir uh, because what will happen otherwise is that the paint will sink to the bottom of the water and all you will get is very, very watery paint. Here I have mixed conch, which is like a super soft baby pink. It's gorgeous and I've mixed it with water. Um, so I've diluted it again, 50-50 with water. I'm applying it sort of just underneath the blue around the edges and also a little bit over the flowers and again just ragging and what this ragging technique does again is just creates a lot of texture this is what's going to give the piece this kind of very warm look that I'm looking for because you're using a lot of water as well just make sure that you wipe the top of the drawers and also you know the top of the doors and things like that and this will just um, prevent your drawers and doors from sticking God, I've been there so many times where my doors are stuck um, after I've finished a piece and it's such a nightmare to get them open so you're better off trying to sort that out um, while it's still wet than, rather than when it's dry. So I've got my Hampton Olive again and I've mixed it again, I've diluted it with water, another 50-50 solution again and I am applying this to the bottom. I am also mixing it into the conch and ragging. Okay so this piece is totally dry now and it's time to wax. I've got a big round brush from Redesign with Prima which are my favourite wax brushes for the overall kind of large area waxing. I'm using Best Down Wax in White by Dixie Bell 
and I'm not too worried about going, I usually tell people to build things up gradually but I know I want a lot of white wax on this piece so I'm kind of just going to go for it. I'm using circular movements, putting on a little bit of pressure to make sure that it gets into the grain and this is going to really soften it. White wax is brilliant for bringing colours together, it's great for softening colours and also adding some age to them. I'm especially going to make sure that I put plenty over the flowers, you know, the delicate fleur transfer that I used, because what I really want from this piece, you know, if you think of old botany books and they have like pretty flowers that are drawn really well, usually hand drawn, um, and then they have these like pages and the pages have usually gone really brown and crispy and it just looks so pretty and that's kind of what's inspired this look, is like really old kind of botanist books. 